Hey guys, this is Dr. Daniel Sugai, board certified dermatologist in Seattle. I wanna to talk to you about skin checks today and being a medical dermatologist, I do cosmetics as well, but primarily medical dermatology. And I am uh, doing skin checks multiple times in a day. And it's very important to get your skin checked. When I did my rotation in Japan, I loved it. Uh, the very interesting part, difference was that the dermatologists in Japan do not do full skin checks. They would just look at the site where they previously excise or cut out a skin cancer and just monitor that site, that general area. In my mind, it makes sense because Asians or Japanese uh, patients do not get skin cancers like Americans where we have more fair skin. Having the, the, having the phenotype of red hair, blue eyes, fair skin, that really puts you at risk for skin cancer. And so I find a lot of skin cancers here in, in Seattle, even though we have the stereotypical cloudy, rainy weather, we actually still have a lot of skin cancer. So I'm really glad that you're watching this video because it sounds like you're interested in uh, getting your skin checked or if you're preparing for your uh, full skin examination, this is a good video just to, uh, just to give you a broad overview of what to expect. Ready for your full skin examination, ideally I would like you to not have any makeup on. Makeup does uh, blur out uh, very important features of the skin. I wanna see reds and browns. I'm not just looking for black spots. You know, people think melanoma only is black. It can only come out as a black spot. I found red melanomas. And also the most common skin cancer one can get basal cell carcinoma, typically presents as a red spot. And it's not always raised. It can be a flat, very subtle change in your skin. And so I need to use my matoscope to look very closely at your skin. So don't wear any makeup, please. Also, I look at your nails. I look at your toenails, especially. And I'm also hoping that you don't wear any nail polish on your fingernails and your toenails because I want to monitor any brown bands that might show up in your nail plate. Other things to know is that I will be messing your hair up. So uh, it's best to know that I'm going to have your hair down. If you have long hair in a bun, I'm going to take it down and I want to look at your scalp very well. And you might want to have a brush ready for if you have an important meeting afterwards, have your brush ready to fix your hair because you're going to get the Sugai hairdo for sure. Other things you will examine from your scalp behind your ears. Uh, your your face, your, of course your body, down to your toes. And I've even found melanoma on the buttocks and also between the toes. So I am looking there as well. Um, you know, we have really good lighting in our office. So we definitely um, we'll be examining you from head to toe very carefully with my dermatoscope. And you wanna go to a dermatologist who is trained when using a dermatoscope because dermoscopy is very important. It saves us from doing unnecessary biopsies and also helps us diagnose uh, skin cancers uh, very well. It can also make us feel better about reassuring you on benign lesions that look great up uh, close because there are a lot of scary things that are on your skin that are actually very uh, reassuringly benign once we look up close with our dermatoscope. During your visit, we might uh, we are looking for pre-skin cancers called actinic keratoses. And so I'll be feeling with my fingers on the face, the hot spots for actinic keratoses, the C around the eyes, top of the nose, rim of the ears. I will ask you to remove your hearing aids, your glasses during that examination. During this time, we are asking our patients to wear uh, face masks to your visit, and we will keep those on throughout the skin check until I am ready to look at this part of the face. It's totally fine to come in with things circled on your skin. I uh, have a lot of men who come in with their wives who can't come to the visit with them. They circle concerning spots. That's totally fine. I'm okay with a spouse coming with you to your appointment as long as your spouse is wearing a mask. Um, ideally, we would not like to, we would like to limit the amount of people coming to your visit. But I actually do like spouses uh, in the room because I want to give a tour of the back just to show, hey, this is actually a benign seborrheic keratosis, or this is a benign uh, blood vessel growth. This is a mole that I want you to watch. This is a mole that I'm going to take off because of X, Y, and Z. So I do like that part of the visit where I can educate not just the patient but the spouse. During the visit, I'll be spraying pre-skin cancers with liquid nitrogen, which is a big blue metallic uh, canister where I'll be spraying this loud spray of liquid nitrogen on concerning spots. I also will spray warts with it or really irritated seborrheic keratoses that are bugging you. I can also remove skin tags for you with that. Um, so expect that during the visit, I will be carrying that can. Uh, patients have a uh, joke around saying they should buy me a holster for it because I'm always walking around with it. <laughs> If 
I find a concerning spot, I will do a biopsy. There are two types of biopsies, a shave biopsy and a punch biopsy. Uh, shave biopsies, most, most of the time, more than 90% of the time, I will do a shave biopsy to diagnose the skin lesion. If it's a rash, I usually will do a punch biopsy and I will um, numb with local anesthesia and afterwards I will likely cauterize and cover with a band-aid the spot. I usually say it doesn't uh, restrict your activity, but I want you to keep it clean and avoid um, you know, keeping it uncovered or going into a hot tub. I usually say when it, while it's still raw, don't do any submerging of your body underwater. So no uh, pool time or bath time or hot tub time while you have an open wound from a biopsy. Usually it takes about a week to get your pathology results and we'll call you and let you know how um, to deal with the, the, the skin lesion, whether it's benign or we have to have you come back in and cut more of it out with stitches. How often you should get checked out, there's no clear answer on that. It's very stylistic. For me, I will take into account family history of melanoma, do you have, especially in first degree relatives, do you have a personal history of skin cancers or, or dysplastic nevi or atypical moles? I also will ask a history of indoor tanning, blistering sunburns. I'll take all of those into account and then I'll look into your, at your skin and see, you know, the density of your moles, the variety of your moles, and then I will come up with a plan on how often you should be seen. Also see kids too. I see children for skin checks. So there's never an age where you say you're too young to get your skin checked. It's always good to get a baseline check and I will do the hard work in deciding how often you should come back. I hope that this video was very helpful for you. I am so glad that you're interested in getting your skin checked because it is very important. During this pandemic, I was fortunate to still work and see patients on an urgent basis, but the patients I did see, I did find some melanomas and melanoma is a fatal skin cancer that you do not want to have. But if you do have it, you want to catch it early because it can metastasize and grow very quickly. In a skin examination visit could save your life, which sounds scary, but it is a truth that we see. And I um, am very proud of my specialty. I'm very happy that I can still say that I help save patients' lives by diagnosing these deadly cancers. And I wish that we didn't have any of these cancers, truly, but it is a, a reality that we face, not just in my home state of Hawaii or in Boston where I train. When I did my rotation in Colorado, being at a high altitude, um, you know, with a high UV index, there was a lot of skin cancer there, but we still see it in Seattle. So please get, uh, think about getting your skin checked and I'll see you then. Please take care. Peace.